appreciate you joining us today and this evening. Uh, my name is Ladada Taylor, and I am the president of the Adventure Group, and we are very excited to be here this evening to have the opportunity to talk briefly with you about some ideas to continue to build strong schools and focus on learning recovery this summer. So Megan, if you'll go to the next slide. Um, the Family Engagement Center in West Virginia is um, operated through the Adventure Group in partnership with the West Virginia Department of Education. This project is funded by the U.S. Department of Education. It is a $4.8 million grant working with the 100 schools throughout the state. However, a lot of the things that we do are applicable to um, really all schools in West Virginia. And if you do not happen to be one of those 100 schools that we are working with, please reach out to us. Our contact information will be included at the end of the webinar. And we are always looking for ways that we can help additional schools and work with students and families and teachers and principals across the state. We do grant writing and I'm eager to work with you if you find that there are things that we mentioned this evening that you think might be helpful to you. Uh, I mentioned that the program is operated through the Adventure Group. If you are not familiar with us, uh, we are an education nonprofit. And you can see on the screen that we do customized programming to serve students, educators, and families in West Virginia and throughout the United States. I am very proud to say that we uh, started almost 20 years ago. And on June 1st, we will have our 20th anniversary and we are extremely uh, proud of that. We have been working throughout West Virginia in schools in every county in the state. I started as a high school math teacher at Morgantown High School. And so, um, you know, we are educators. We, we are thrilled to have the opportunity to continue to seek funds and be able to help um, schools throughout the state. So again, please, you know, jot down our contact information. We would be very open to trying to work with you in any way that um, might be helpful. And so with that, um, you know, the, I'll turn it over to Nancy Klein from the department. Without the Department of Ed here in West Virginia and specifically Nancy Klein, we would not be able to do the things that we are doing focused on family engagement. So we are extremely appreciative of that partnership. And I'll turn it over to Nancy to talk a little about the department and then we will jump into some content to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ladada. Yeah, the Department of Ed is dedicated to um, finding ways to engage families in education. The department recognizes the importance um, in making sure that families support children as they are learning and that families are a part in decision-making uh, as it pertains to their children's education. Thank you, Nancy and Ladada. Um, we're gonna start out this evening with a quote from Drs. Karen Mapp and Ann Henderson, who are at um, Harvard University um, College of Education. The quote says this, it says, when schools, families, and community groups work together to support learning, children tend to do better in school, stay in school longer, and like school more. And this quote is a direct um, quote from their dual capacity building framework for family school partnerships. And much of our work with the West Virginia Family Engagement Center is built upon that dual capacity building framework. So during tonight's presentation, we're really gonna focus on ways in which you can engage families in a co-created process of learning, particularly around summer programming. So again, we appreciate you joining us this evening and look forward to um, sharing these thoughts with you. As far as family engagement is concerned, as Nancy mentioned, it is a key priority of the West Virginia Department of Education and also of the West Virginia Family Engagement Center program. Research shows that family engagement can improve um, student outcomes, including attendance, behavior, and achievement. Within our West Virginia Family Engagement Center program, as Ladada mentioned, we are working with 100 schools. Um, we've currently worked with 50 of those 100 schools in our first two cohorts and are getting ready to kick things off with the third cohort of schools. We have seen um, significant outcomes when it comes to key student outcomes, such as attendance, behavior, and achievement in just the first few years of this program, and look forward to continuing to sustain that work throughout our Family Engagement Center program, both within and beyond those 100 schools in West Virginia. 
We also recently have begun conducting um, several family focus groups and um, follow-up interviews with school level administration, educators, and school staff throughout the West Virginia Family Engagement Center program. And with that, you know, we have heard some um, challenges and successes from both the families and the schools. Something that they really are focusing on right now, particularly around um, recovery efforts after COVID-19 is enhancing communication. Um, we have heard multiple times that, um, you know, it has been very challenging to communicate with families and students, particularly those without internet access during the pandemic. Um, so finding ways to think outside of the box to, to communicate with those folks that might not have access, as well as um, really encouraging families and students to continue to remain involved in the educational process has been something that's been very key um, throughout these focus groups and interviews that we've continued to um, hear from our, from our schools that we're working with. Okay, so um, tips for engaging families uh, this summer. Here are some big rocks, okay? If you want your program, your uh, learning recovery program to be successful, engage your families from all over your school district in making those plans. Um, make sure that you have a diverse representation of those families as well. Um, and you want to communicate early about what your program is about. Um, so you want to be sure that your families understand um, why you're doing this this summer, who these programs are open to, what the times are that they occur, whether or not transportation is available. Um, if you're using common pickup areas, the times that families need to have their children there. Um, you want to make sure that they know which meals will be provided during the summer, if any. Um, and also, whether or not there will be any cost, uh, maybe for field trips or anything like that, or supplies, anything like that. Um, and I, I suspect probably not. Um, but then also, working very closely with parents about specific uh, needs and accommodations. For example, um, students who have health needs or students who, um, whose parents can't get them to that common area, working with them. So looking ahead, foreseeing what some of the obstacles or barriers might be and making sure that parents know that you're going to work with them on that. And as well, let them know exactly who your program will be um, catered for. Um, what are the attendance policies? Are there any? What will be any type of disciplinary, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. disciplinary. I'm sorry. Any, if there be some um, disciplinary, uh, hey, responses that might be put in place if something happens. Um, as well as, depending on the time of your program, will the buses drop kids off at after school programs or after summer, pro and we don't want to call it summer school uh, because we're likening these to like summer camps and uh, we hope, and just exploratory and adventure uh, and in, in um, enrichment type activities. So after they're done with that, where can they be dropped off if parents are not at home? So now another thing, use data. Use your data to group your students, but also use your data to group your families. So if, for example, you're going to offer, um, let's say a special program for your, <clears throat> excuse me, at risk, rising ninth graders, then we'll, what will you offer their parents? In other words, how, what do those parents need to know to be able to help their children and how will you communicate that to them? And what is it that you can do to fully pull those families in to make sure that those children have good attendance, um, that they work hard and um, that they participate fully in the program as well um, you want to also it, uh, 
provide for families. And I say that because I know that you all have money this year for your summer programs, but provide, I'm not talking food, but programming for them and learning opportunities. So if many of your families don't um, have computers or know how to use um, Microsoft, then it's a great time to teach them as well, be it online or face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I spoke with someone recently, one of the directors recently about even offering a swim class. So if you have a, a county or a city pool, um, or if you have a YMCA, why not make that part of your summer program? And what about parents who can take water uh, exercise classes while their children are taking swim classes? Maybe you can use a separate space for those families or those parents to uh, talk with them about various issues uh, that pertain to your particular county and your particular parents. So keeping in mind, I think it's very important that you keep in mind uh, not just the needs of your students, but also the needs of your families. Um, and that is why it's so important that I go back to the first one, engage those families in the planning because they have an idea of what their needs are uh, and what their children's needs are as well. And you want to make sure that you um, use data, not just to group kids and families based on skills and needs and those kinds of things, but also to, to monitor the success of your summer program so that you can adjust for next summer or so that you can inform what happens in the fall. It's very important that you be you have a starting place or a baseline for the students that you serve so that the instructors, uh, the adults that are working with these students, whether it's in enrichment or reading and math, whatever, so that they have uh, a clear understanding of where you want these kids to go. This is uh, definitely a wonderful time to let students release and relax, no doubt about it. Even the teachers enjoy learning, but at the same time, there has to be some focused learning so that there's some recovery um, of what students lost. Not shoving a whole lot down their throats, but focusing on the main skills that you want to make sure that students going to the whatever grade level have during the summer. So you might have a four to six week summer program uh, for those rising ninth graders, where some of the time they're working on math, uh, some of the time they're working on writing and reading, but also exploring careers. You might have guest speakers come in for them. You might have them go on field trips. You might have them um, meet with um, people in the industry, in various industries using technology uh, during, during the day. And that would be all a part of their programming. You might even have your social worker or your um, school psychologist or your so, um, school counselor spend time with them during the day to work on goal setting, to work on um, uh, social emotional pieces. So it's a great time to really expand, think outside. I hate to say this, but it's right. Think outside the box and do some things a little bit differently. Um, also, I think it's important that you celebrate with families. And I don't mean just having a, a Zoom meeting where we applaud the kids for what they've done, or but you ask the parents, what's going on with them? What, what do you want to celebrate? Maybe there's a parent who lost 10 pounds. Maybe there's a parent who um, uh, has started an exercise program or a parent who's taking a cooking class, uh, a healthy cooking class, and they've tried some of those recipes, celebrate the small pieces with them and pull them into the learning with what, what things they are learning. 
you see. Uh, so not just celebrating the, the kids and their academic progress or their athletic accomplishments, but hey, as a parent, you're doing some great things for yourself and for your family too. Let's have a let's have a night of celebration, a parent night only. If you want to uh, have a glass of wine while we do this, if you want to um, showcase uh, how you redecorated something in your room in a room at your house, hey, let's celebrate that. We all need to feel like we've accomplished something after what we've been through. And then also create a calendar. Create a calendar of events that will inform parents of when something's going on, but have that calendar ready early. So if you're gonna do or have or sponsor some online learning sessions for parents, have that already mapped out. If you are going to um, have some face-to-face -face sessions or if there are gonna be some sessions at the YMCA or at the McDonald's or uh, at the pizza place, you know, plan those ahead of time. Even if you don't have them totally planned out, put them on a calendar so parents can um, plan for that early on. So I hope that these ideas help a little bit. Do you have any questions? Um, do you have any questions or any comments? If not, Megan, back to you. So, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Nancy. I'm sorry. Um, well, the, during the importance of the whole summer program is to recoup some learning. That's true, but you have to have fun. As I said before, if we push kids too hard, if we push families too hard, um, then we will not accomplish what we wanna accomplish. But here's the other piece, that the fun must have a purpose, not fun just for fun. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with taking a break and letting everybody just have a good time, but have fun in a way where everybody's learning. So you want to engage not just the students, but also the families so that that learning is recouped and you want parents to learn how they can help recoup some of that learning at home. Okay, now I'm finished, Megan. <laughs> There are several benefits of summer learning, um, including improved participation in after school programs. We see that when students um, engage in that summer programming, that they're more likely to then participate in after school during the upcoming academic year. Um, you know, the benefits of summer learning is that it actually benefits those after school participants themselves. So the more students that do participate in summer learning, when they then transition into that after school programming during the school year as well, we see significant um, benefits to their well being, social emotional learning, um, and overall engagement in the academic progress process. We also see um, summer learning positively affecting family engagement, both at school and also in the home as well. As Nancy mentioned, you know, it's so important to um, get families involved throughout every step of the planning and also in within the events as well. So, you know, if we're engaging families in summer learning, that's going to make them more apt to participate um, in the school during the academic year as well. And then fin finally, summer learning helps us to um, build trust and relationships, not only with our students, but with their families as well. So this is a great time for schools to really build these relationships. This opportunity during summer um, where school is not as structured will either break uh, relationships or build relationships. And so as you're going through this, you need to think about what messages are we sending to families and um, what messages are we saying about who we are and how we want them involved? So the educator's role in this process. It's extremely important, as I said before, that these programs are linked to learning, but also that when you engage parents, 
be it in a very structural, structured or formal way or very informal way where you're having a good time and you, that you link learning and student well-being and their development to this. So it doesn't have to be huge or big. It could be just that you're handing out um, packets that they can use to practice um, various things that the students are learning during the school day. Or you might say that we're gonna have a movie night in the park when we really want you to come. But while they're there, you might talk about some foundational reading skills and how to practice those uh, foundational reading skills um, at home, either before the movie or in the middle of the movie, you stop, you've got their undivided attention, grab them and, and, and get what you need from them, give them what you want them to have. So um, also make sure that families have a say in um, when these things take place and how they take place. I love this term funds of knowledge. Um, Megan, will you talk about funds of knowledge when it comes to families, please? Absolutely, yes. You know, I think this, this comes from um, Drs. Mapp and Henderson. Um, and when it comes to those family funds of knowledge, that's really honoring um, their cultures, practices, traditions, and really honoring their lived experiences and bringing that into um, our role as um, educators, as administrators, and ultimately just as those that are incorporating family engagement into the educational process. So, you know, by really um, meeting those families where they are, honoring what they know, how they know to do it is really a key component of success when it comes to our role in promoting and enhancing family engagement. So you always want to make sure that your learning environment is welcoming to students and to parents. So you want to step back and walk from the sidewalk or from the front of the entranceway all the way through the school to see how parents might view who you all are as teachers. You want to do that even with your online activities. So you want to keep in mind, are we including all of our students? Can all of our students see themselves in a positive way? Um, the way that we present things, the way that our school is decorated, the way that we talk with, uh, with families. So you wanna make sure that you talk with uh, parents of different cultures, different faiths um, and different economic levels so that they can feel all feel welcomed. I lost volume. Did mm -hmm. anyone else lose volume? Hmm. No. Can everybody hear me? You can just um, put in the chat. Can you all, can you hear us? Okay, great. Great, okay, great, great. So going beyond COVID-19, we have to um, think about learning recovery all the time and how to engage parents, not just in the summer, but also beyond the summer. How can we use this opportunity to build partnerships with them, to build relationships with them so that uh, we maximize learning for all children in our school buildings? Um, one thing we can do is help families learn how to set goals uh, for themselves, for their families, and for their kids. And how to monitor, and when we say the word monitor, that sounds so education, that's such jargon, educational jargon, but help them sort of um, go through and check their learning, their goals. Um, so I think that would be just a, a session in itself. As we get started this summer, let's all set some goals for ourselves. Um, and then how do you uh, find somebody who can help you be accountable um, 
to with your working towards your goals, all of those kinds of pieces. And we have to do the same thing in education um, as well. It's very, very important that we provide families with practical ways to practice learning at home. By that I mean, how can they incorporate learning into their everyday lives? So when my daughter was very young, we had a small trampoline in the house, it's supposed to have been for me, <laughs> but she used it. So when she was jumping on it, I said, okay, I'll jump too. And we jumped and that's how I caught, taught her to count. And very young, she was counting all the way to 100. And then so I said, well, shucks, if she can do that, we can count now by twos and we can count by fives. And so I made, um, I tried to make learning fun. Um, we would play games in the car, learning games in the car, and all parents can do that. You know, I spy, they, when they're going for a walk, um, when they're eating dinner, there are lots of things to talk about, to learn, and it's up to us to give them the tools that they need because all parents are not educators. So we want to empower them to engage and, and uh, be a part of this whole learning process on a daily basis. We often say uh, parents aren't doing their part, but it's because sometimes they don't know what to do or how to do it, or they're very busy and they feel like they don't have time to sit down with pencil and paper and practice this, that, and the other. Wherein really, they can practice writing with their students, uh, writing a paragraph by just starting a paragraph with them, um, by talking it out. Um, mm, starting with, I went to the beach la last week and I saw a shark that I thought was going to eat me. And then the next child adds to the story, the next child adds to the story, just get them thinking. So share those kinds of ideas with families it, so that they can have fun learning together and it can be a part of their everyday lives. And be very intentional and how you build these partnerships, not just this summer, but always. What is it that you want from your parents in your school building? And how will you build that? How will you get there? So it's not haphazard. It's not by chance. It's just like um, thinking about teaching. This is where we want our parents to be, and here's how we hope to get them there. And with that, you have the West Virginia Family Engagement Center with uh, LaDonna and with Megan and all of their staff. And then you have folks at the Department of Education who can help you think through this process and make it a part of your whole strategic plan. We need to move away in our strategic plans. We need to move from um, wanting more parent engagement to how you're going to engage parents in all of your goals. So work on creating activities um, that families and students can do together and share that with them. Megan. Both the uh, West Virginia Family Engagement Center and West Virginia Department of Education have multiple resources to support you through this process. Um, we have family engagement training and support. We have prevention training and support. We are just getting ready to kick off a rural school leadership program. We have um, McKinney Vinto Homeless Education Research and Training, as well as a variety of local, state, and national partnerships. And after today's presentation, if you'd like to reach out to um, one of the three of us or all three of us, we'd be happy to discuss these options with you further. We're also online. Um, you can find the Family Engagement Center on Twitter at WVFEC. Our Facebook page is House Within the Adventure Group. And our website is WVFEC.org. If you go to the COVID-19 resource page under the WVFEC website, you will find a variety of um, webinars there that provide really practical um, tips and tangible resources for families. And we would certainly encourage you to share those out um, as you are able. 
And again, um, we are here to support you anytime. Here are all three of our email addresses. You have Ladada's, then mine, and then Nancy. So please do feel free to reach out to us at any time. And here are the references from today's um, presentation. If you'd like to take a screenshot of this to have for your um, for your um, you know perusal at a later time, you're certainly welcome to do that. And again, you know we certainly have enjoyed um, speaking to you this evening, and we will look forward to um, you know certainly continuing to support you both during summer summer learning and throughout the next academic year. Well, daughter Nancy, do you have anything else that you'd like to share before we sign off for the evening? I don't. Are there any questions or comments from anyone, anyone that's a part of the Zoom? We didn't want to hold you long. I'm so glad you all took time to, to be a part of this. I hope that it was helpful. Ladada? No, just thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening and please reach out to us. We're anxious to help in any way that we can. We know your plates are full and we look forward to speaking to you individually in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy and Megan. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night.